Today is Wednesday, August 27, 2014, the 239th day of the year. There are 126 days remaining until the end of 2014. Sunrise is at 6.07 a.m. Solar noon today is at 12.52 p.m. The sun sets at 7.35 p.m. Length of daylight hours today is 13 hours, 30 minutes, 46 seconds. 2 minutes, 53 seconds shorter than yesterday. Tomorrow will be 2 minutes, 53 seconds shorter than today. The young waxing crescent moon rises at 8.07 a.m. with 4.3% illumination, appears directly overhead passing the celestial median at 2.17 p.m. and sets at 8.19 p.m. The moon passes today above downtown Rutland City at 250,891 miles distant from the center of planet Earth within the fifth zodiacal designation, Virgo, the Virgin. Under partly cloudy skies in downtown Rutland, today's forecast calls for a mix of fair skies with some clouds around, high daytime temperatures hovering around 82 degrees on the Fahrenheit scale, a predicted 20% chance of measurable rainfall by this afternoon, with light west-southwest wind 5 to 10 miles per hour. Tonight, mostly clear skies and overnight low temperature around 55 degrees with light north-northwest wind. On Thursday, should be mostly clear sky, though you can expect a good 10 degree drop in the high afternoon temperature, likely topping out around 71 degrees with a rather slim 10% chance of measurable rainfall together with light winds. Pollen count 8.5 out of 12, humidity is high at 90%, UV index safe 0 out of 12, and air quality remains good. The hottest recorded temperature within the contiguous United States on Monday is 112 degrees at Death Valley in the Golden State, California. The lowest temperature, 32 degrees at West Yellowstone and Old Faithful Yellowstone in Montana, the Equality State, the Cowboy State, the Big Sky Country. For most of history, man has had to fight nature to survive. In this century, he's beginning to realize that in order to survive, he must protect it. Jacques-Yves Cousteau. Nature World News reports as the oil and gas drilling technique known as fracking or hydraulic fracturing grows in this country, scientists are becoming increasingly concerned about the potential health risks some of these toxic fracking fluids pose to mammals, a new study describes. Of the 200 commonly used compounds shot into the ground during this process, eight of them are toxic to mammals, according to the researchers. Fracking involves injecting water with a mix of chemical additives into rock formations deep underground to promote the release of oil and gas. The practice seems to have expanded overnight in the United States. Consequently, it has also stimulated major opposition and troubling reports of contaminated well water as well as increased air pollution near drilling sites. The industrial side was saying we're just using food additives, basically making ice cream here, lead author William Stringfellow said in an American Chemical Society news release. On the other side, there's talk about the injection of thousands of toxic chemicals. As scientists, we looked at the debate and asked, what's the real story? To figure out for themselves who's right, Stringfellow's team at Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory and University of the Pacific analyzed a list of substances commonly used in fracking. They include gelling agents to thicken the fluids, biocides to keep microbes from growing, sand to prop open tiny cracks in the rocks, and compounds to prevent pipe corrosion. Most fracking compounds require treatment before being released. They also identified eight compounds, albeit not thousands, which are reportedly toxic to mammals. We can't let shale development outpace our understanding of its environmental impacts, Morgan Tingley, co-author of a recent study published in the journal Frontiers in Ecology and the Environment, said in a statement. The past has taught us that environmental impacts of large-scale development and resource extraction, whether coal plants, large dams, or biofuel monocultures, are more than the sum of their parts. These scientists presented their findings August 13 in the American Chemical Society's 248th National Meeting and Exposition. This is today's Weather Minute. I'm Richard Alcott.